Your first destination is Dizzy Heights. You must retrieve the For ghost. real, for real, for real. For real, for real. Peace the good at hexagons. Take one step wrong, your good is gone. Young, dumb, dip didn't come. The ghost will haunt you till the crown is won. Scarier than the debt from after pay. He's a grown ass man. This ain't a game. Well, it is a game and it, it is, is for kids. kids. But that's not the point. It's very serious. The gay's coming through. He's dashing through the walls. Ooh. He's got him for that crown. He's faster than the mall. Oh, yeah, the ghost is clear and pleasing through. Uh, yeah, yeah. So my mind stop it till it go and glizzy. One crown, but my homies on my throne with me. We on thin ice. I got my soul with me. It's like you never getting paid. What's up? Vlade, Bratakis. Thoughts on G4 disbanding again? Uh, the business model didn't work. They just made it they too, too much cost. And they didn't really know how to monetize it. Similar happened to Venn. Actually, a whole bunch of companies started in 2021 uh, with the goal of like, we understand gamers and we're going to make content for them. And none of it really panned out. Like almost all of them are shuttered now. The only one still up that like hired a bunch of people is um, what's that website that always has the same articles about streamers? <laughs> dot, dot esports. I think Dot Esports are the only one. Uh, Dexerto, yeah, Dexerto. Dexerto. Dexerto is like the only business model that is even close to work because they pay writers nothing to write clickbaity articles about streamers. <laughs> and that has worked. That They have survived. Everyone else that started in 2021-ish around the same uh, has totally failed. So let me... Uh, Dexterito writers love live stream fails. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so get ready to do the work for you. Just saw the YouTube video club was insane. I'm glad you liked it. I loved it. Playing it right now. It's probably sipping on a you you. We got a copy cow. Better watch your back. Comment is a bitch when the comment comes around. Big A got S3K and I'll be walking up fall mountain skates. Mm. Catch me running up them face. I'll be basketball and call me D Way. Uh. Stand for glamour, I got the gold inside me. I'm a spawn of Quincy, got the ghost behind me. Chamber 47, got my ghost inside me. I'm a fucking jet, I got the ghost beside me. Saying, hey, Big A, don't you frown. Look, the ghost is got it now. We gotta beat the phantom, my friend. A chance, meet me at Who the dancing ring and bring all the fans. 4K Andy, racist Randy. Better keep the gristle in the grinder. I'm a go lead stands. Capital D colon, eyes wide open. Give the man a second, cause the spectrum. Yeah, his internet's broken. Mm -hmm. You always make excuses and you ain't got jokes. And you start another game, even though you're not a joke. Did you like the new House of Dragons episode? Hey, no spoilers. <laughs> Any House of the Dragons fans? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, what a crazy app. Yeah. I did like it. Uh, Ludden and Cutie came over. We watched it. I also did a double date with Linkus and Maisie yesterday. We did mini golf. Can I reveal something to you? <laughs> Linkus and Maisie suck at mini golf. Bad, bad, dude. Like it, it is not close. That was a no scores kept situation. Bad. 
Uh, <laughs> leaked. <laughs> Do you think I can watch Hot D without knowing anything about Game of Thrones? Yes. I almost recommend it because Game of Thrones ends so poorly that it could make you quit the series. <laughs> oh, minus five. Uh, and you said, thanks for the Enron hat. Thanks for the five and buying the Enron hat. I believe hats have started to arrive. I know the Enron ones have, but those already existed. Uh, I don't know if anyone's confirmed got their bankrupts yet. I know that the crew necks have not arrived yet, but they are, uh, a coming. Uh, <clears throat> Can I watch Rings of Power without watching Game of Thrones, bro? Uh, here's the question. Can anyone? <laughs> uh, I almost want to do a Marketing Monday on what it feels like. Kind of swept under the rug disaster that Rings of Power has been. I haven't watched it. I, I'm sure some people like it. I'm not saying it's an awful show. I'm just saying in terms of the amount of money they spent and what they wanted from it, I feel like it hasn't. It hasn't trended. Uh, it hasn't done what they hoped. Are you planning on streaming earlier? Today? I think Mondays will always be tough. I always schedule most of my meetings on Mondays, and then I have stuff to do. Uh, so I think, Mark, I don't know. I got to figure it out because Marketing Monday also takes time to do Marketing Monday, like set it up. And, I don't know. But I'm streaming earlier on other days for sure. Especially this week where I should be collabing with Northern Lion during his hours. Uh, let's see if he picked one of these times. Anyway, we'll figure that out. Uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. Although Hot D is good, it's not really trending. I would disagree. I think it's like every single time an episode comes out, they have like number one on Twitter and they have tons of memes on TikTok and they get the, you know, it's just popular minus five. I think you are, uh, we missing it. Hey, Fabio made a new song. I saw it. No, I didn't see the song yet, but I, I, it's for the Reddit, Reddit recap, save the songs for the Reddit recap. Um, the new episode 10 preview has like 10 million views already. Yeah. They've been doing really well. Uh, Microsoft just pulled a big brain move ahead of the Activision deal, closing by laying off 1,000 employees. Microsoft lays off 1,000 employees. Sheesh, two hours ago. Two hours ago. Microsoft laid off 1,000 employees across the company. From Xbox teams to government tech teams, cuts are widespread. Hmm. Like all companies, we evaluate our business priorities on a regular basis and make structural adjustments accordingly. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, this is not only a Microsoft thing. This is definitely happening across the board. We're seeing a winter approach. Winter is coming, Game of Thrones style. Uh, a lot of layoffs, a lot of hiring freezes. People are an uncertain economic future, and they don't want to be left holding the bag. And in this case, for companies, the bag is having to pay salaries. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bat chest. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jowam 1821. Uh, any thoughts on the G4 TV thing? I just think it was a uh, pretty textbook. It's happened a lot. It's happened a lot throughout all of esports and gaming where traditional media tries to like get gamers and they just don't really know how to do it effectively uh, at a good cost. So they spend way too much money and then often overproduced stuff doesn't do that well. And then they don't know how to monetize it at the scale that it is. And so they uh, end up not making nearly enough money. And then they're like, fuck, this is stupid. And they uh, have to fire a bunch of people. <clears throat> but they always promise that they're going to change the game. Uh, have you seen Ben Schwartz? Twitter theories watching Game of Thrones for some? No, I have not. But it sounds funny. I love Ben Schwartz. I love Game of Thrones. 
Um, uh, HROC, my Enron hat came in today. I saw a bunch of people. Everyone tweeted at me their Enron hats. It was great to see it. Actually, it was really funny is uh, <laughs> I got so many tweets of people saying like this started arguments with their parents or grandparents. <laughs> oh, gifties. Was that Westhoven? Wait, who gave me the gifties? Uh, wait, let me pull this down. Uh, gifty, 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 gifty. Hey, thanks, uh, Lila from the two months. Anik, thank you for the eight months. Davidov, thank you for the 10 gifties. Much appreciated. Thank you, Davidov, uh, for the support. 10 new people in the truck flock on his dime. Um, yeah, what was the, uh, let me see if I can find some of them. It was like, I think I liked it. Let's see, likes. Oh, dude, I like too many things. I'll never find it. Fuck me. I like so many fucking the House of the Dragon memes. <laughs> and, then, and then I like this. This is just good. You guys see how those two fucking protesters dumped uh, a can of soup on Van Gogh's sunflower painting? And then some guy said a second can of soup has just hit Van Gogh's sunflowers. And then somebody did a drawing of Van Gogh's self-portrait as George Bush getting whispered on 9-11. It's such a like a uh, nine layers deep fucking meme, but it really cracked me the fuck up. So I liked that. That being said, I could not find. Oh, here it is. I got my Enron hat yesterday and have now been lectured by my dad and grandfather about why it's bad. Thanks, Atriok. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. And then this guy uh, sent me this. Thank you, HROC, for giving me this interaction with my parents. Hashtag Enron. <laughs> He's got the most smug fucking face on. <laughs> it doesn't help to look that self-satisfied. Have some shame like I do at all times. Check out the new hat, Enron. Yeah, representing an iconic American brand. But now it represents fraud. I know some people if you want to get in. <laughs> Don't troll your parents. Okay? They, you're probably using their money to buy the fucking hat. That being said, good looking out. Stand up, you know? Stand up and fight for our right to wear proudly hats of deceased companies. Uh... Will you put out more Enron hats? I, I have... It's an Aiden question. It's an Aiden question? I'll ask him. Uh, we had a very limited quantity this time. I think it was like stuff from previous. <clears throat> but I'm working on it, perhaps. Uh, if... We are working on uh, uh, more stuff. That's what I'll say. And I'm also, I can't promise anything on this, but I'm trying to see if I can slightly reduce the costs just uh, because I thought they were like a, like a few percent too high. Just Derek, thank you for the five months. Uh, can't catch every stream, but love watching every YouTube video. Bro, you fucking drop a sub and you don't have to be in chat and you watch the YouTube videos. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, King. Chatters is the hardest part. Just uh, the fact that you're not here and all you do is watch the YouTube video, that's fucking huge. LMFAO Atrioc looks like the new Buzz Lightyear. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm just white. <laughs> I don't look like that. To be quite honest, I don't. Uh, uh, don't say Gliz Lightyear. <laughs> also, I didn't see it. And I think most people didn't. You guys all saw the new Buzz Lightyear? I think that was a fucking flop. Uh, plot twist. Where were you on January 6th? You know what I honestly was on January 6th? I remember it. I was fucking tweeting about Dream SMP. <laughs> I remember I tweeted about Dream SMP on January 6th and I had to delete the tweet. I had to delete the tweet because everyone was like, what the fuck are you? Like, this is a way more important thing going on right now. And I was like, damn, Tommy in it is crushing on viewership. 
Yeah, it was a banger tweet though. It was a banger tweet. Uh, bankrupt hasn't shipped yet. It should have. Sh uh, I don't know. I can't say. I have no. It's all Aiden. It's on Aiden, my friend. He's working on it. Um. Never mind. A true fan would have kept the tweet up. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'm not the truest Dream SMP fan. Just a Dream fan, really. I like Dream for more than just his Minecraft. You know what I'm saying? I like his jaw. I like his attitude. I like his in your face attitude. What about Ji Jin? What about Ji Ping? You forgot Jin. Uh, Filth the screen. They were the prime. Kothim. They were the 18 months. Too great for you. They were the two months. SHG. They were the two months. Kitten Warlock. They were the 23 months. We'll start here about 9 o'clock, by the way. So in like 14 minutes. Shaq to Noah. Think of the two months. Just You know what I was thinking of getting is like a um, like an on-screen countdown or something. Like a little timer. So I can just fucking shoot the shit. And then anyone that comes in, it's like, oh, when's Marketing Monday starting? It's like a little. That'd be cool. Uh, community tonight? Yeah, we'll do one. Perhaps two. Probably one. Um... Fucking midnight, my time always. I got fucking classes tomorrow. <laughs> Bro, there is a VOD. <laughs> There's a VOD and a YouTube video. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I... <laughs> what, what, you're fucking pissed at me. You're angry. <clears throat> Shit. Uh, HR, I just finished all of Community after starting it with your stream. If you want to cry for help there are easier ways to say it <laughs> if you want to tell me that times are hard right now you don't need to tell me that you had to binge six seasons in three days you know what i'm saying i, I get it it's like i understand <laughs> i i you know sometimes we need a break uh h rock i bought I can't, I can't even fucking see what you're saying. Uh, when does the marketing start? Probably around nine. Uh, any plans to play Stardew Valley? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course. No. No. <laughs> Stardew Valley? Randomly? Did I just jump into Stardew Valley? A game that has no real ending? Well, I'm just going to open up stream and fucking farm? Oh, the cow percent. No, yeah, it's... It's on the list. Toasty David the Prime. Emu Lewis in six months. Wow, six months. Can I get a welcome back to the jungle for old time's sake? Feels pumpkin, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> a welcome back to the jungle for... What is that a reference to? When did we ever do a welcome back to the jungle? <laughs> I don't follow that at all. Bro, and also, it's only six months. Slatter, they were the five gifted. Thank you, Slatter. Uh, Phil Pumpkin Man, indeed, I guess. Curvy Haunt Glove, thank you for the fucking... Uh, what, my, 16. Uh, Ooga Beluga, thank you for the two months. Porpit, thank you for the 15. 15 months. Wait, is 15 whenever you get the fucking sweet uh, sub badge? Or is that 16? Or is that 18? Uh, hey, big A, don't you frown? Looks like the ghost is got you now. Uh, uh, H track, would you ever play Subnautica on stream? Yeah, probably. I'm now looking closely for games that you can beat in one sitting. Uh, like I'm talking about between. Four and eight hours. Those kind of games. I really like where I can boot up a game and play the whole thing and be done on stream. I think that's fucking awesome. It's really fun. Feels like a really complete stream to me. Mm. Fortnite. <laughs> Just crank 90s for fucking eight hours. Uh... Bought CD, dude. I everyone chat's fucking 
grooving right now. Wait, all right, let me see what you're saying. Uh, Lord Nitrum, thank you for the fucking gifties. Five gifties, Pog Champ. Subnautica's 12, 15 minimum, probably like 20. Yikes, all right, it's going to be that weekend thing. But I could probably crank it out. Uh, check out Katana Zero, four hours long. Literally everybody loves it. I will watch the trailer right now. Katana Zero trailer. And we will see if it's something I'm interested in. Oh, wait. Minus five. And with that five dollars, you said... Can I, like... Dude, if they're already going to force um, dollar-based chat messages to me, why can't I make them text-to-speech <laughs> so that I don't miss them? <laughs> Connell John will leave the raid, by the way. I don't know if I missed that. Uh... I can't, I can't see your message. It actually got fucking belated. Uh, but, but, uh, oh, here it is. I got it back. But, 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 all right. Katana Zero launch trailer. Let me just take a fucking quick peek at it. Were you having a nightmare? Pixel art. My face went in pixel art, dude. Uh-oh. Little worried. Little worried, dude, about pixel art. be a douchebag <laughs> don't be don't be fucking contrarian you know what i meant obviously you know what i meant yikes Okay, if it's under four hours and everyone has it rave reviews, I'll be down to play it. Why not, you know? Why fucking not? Uh, I wish that I could play Fury again for the first time. That game was fucking awesome. Uh, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna do the uh, Fury mode. I was thinking about it uh, yesterday, but I didn't have time. Uh. You should try Death's Door. Oh, I, oh, I try real ones. No, I tried Death's Door. Actually, I thought I liked Death's Door. Why did I stop? I must have got busy. It wasn't okay. Low key, high key. Low key, Thor's bro. Uh, it was good. Do you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't great. Is that fair to say? It's, it, you're you're allowed to be good, but not. There's a difference between good and great. You could be fucking a good basketball player or you could be LeBron James. That wasn't LeBron James. That's all I'm saying. It was a good game. I didn't regret it. But it wasn't like, wow, this game. Like, Fury was way better than, than Death's Door. Um, Bloons is Jordan. Death's Door is LeBron. <laughs> Those are your top. Those are the two games competing for GOAT. Bloons and Death's Door. Plorby! Thank you for the one year. Welcome to the one year club. I am working with Maisie by the dubs to get more custom sub badges for the people that are farther than two and a half years and also the one year. I'm adding two more sub badges because I think one year should get a cool sub badge. Uh, so we're working on that. Uh, I think one of them, at Linkus' suggestion, might end up being a fucking Paper Mario hammer, which he said would be fucking the greatest idea. <laughs> and I said it'd be awful. And then Maisie said, I think Linkus is right. 
and they're dating. So <clears throat> that should be the two plus. Yeah, I think so. It'll be the long term one. Um. Uh, Omega lol paying five bucks and having some random message read instead of yours. It's not a fucking. <laughs> yeah, it, whatever message strikes my fancy, I'm gonna. It's not a fucking uh, capitalist dystopia. <laughs> You're Omega lolling that the fucking world doesn't work where the person who spends the most money automatically gets front of the line. Uh, Uggsy, thank you for the 19 months. Bozo, thank you for the prime. Uh, also, I don't see these messages. Like, they're not even popping up. Because I don't read the fucking chat through this fucking $5 system. It doesn't happen IRL. Everyone knows that IRL, like money gets you nowhere. Everybody here knows that in real life, like, okay, online it's fun to have money. But like in real life, money doesn't get you anything. Like everyone knows like it's like, like if you sit with a lot of money, you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> like what does that, what does that even get you? It's almost a curse. Yeah. People pity Jeff Bezos sometimes. Homeless people. Because he doesn't know, like, the value of, like, uh, you know, freedom. He's so trapped by his money. Uh, money is, like, so fake for real. <laughs> I'd rather have vibes than money. Exactly. You know, we talk about people who are billionaires in money. But who are billionaires in vibes? Do you know what I'm saying? Who's got the best and the most amount of vibes? That person's the real fucking... What if it's also Jeff Bezos? <laughs> it's Warren Buffett. <laughs> Warren Buffett is hoarding both the dollars and the vibes. He's a vibe billionaire. Uh... Money and cock, the more you have, the worse it is. Bill, what do you <laughs> what is that your contribution to the chat? House of the Dragon's insane. Yeah, House of the Dragon was great. House of the Dragon ruled. We had a nice little uh get together. Friends came over. We watched it. Cutie bit the cake, a House of the Dragon uh cake, and we watched House of the Dragon, and then everyone booed the whole time at all the characters. <laughs> but it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Better than Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings, but according to Ari, yes, she's watched both. I I have no real. I I'm just not really a Lord of the Rings guy. Uh oh, I said it. I like the original trilogy of movies, but outside of that, I'm not like I. You know what I hated? It's the fucking Hobbit movies. Blah! Barf! Fucking barf! I'll say it, bro. Those Hobbit movies sucked ass. <laughs> Elven or Dwarven ass The dragon was cool though Bro I heard that I heard, That's not a really funny thing Wait uh, I saw this fucking hilarious thing Where it was uh, Benedict Cumberbatch Mo-capping smog Yeah <laughs> I kill wherever I please, and none can stop me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's already really fucking funny. But then I saw like an actual computer animator quote to it, and he's talking about it, and he's like, yeah, dude, we get these from studios all the time, and like the first thing we do is throw them in the trash. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't really help. When they're when they're fucking actually CGIing the dragon, it, like there's not like this is mostly for fucking show. And to make the actors feel like they're part of it. They don't even... It's actually more work to try and use this than to just fucking make a CGI dragon. <clears throat> so, like, he Sorry. just gets the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> like, they're not using this to fucking no animate a dragon's limbs. For your filthy dwarf <laughs> friends. You have nice <laughs> manners for a liar. <laughs> 
and a thief. <laughs> this is some sordid scheme hatched between them and those miserable top trading men. Yeah, he really gets into it, though. Bro, this would have been better in the movie. He's fucking slobbering. The CGI dragon was so boring compared to that. I had heart. Uh, anyway, yeah, those movies blue chunks, and I won't hear otherwise. Ari likes him though, so you have at least one ally in this house if you like him. Dude, that the fucking scene, and uh, I I think people know this, but the worst fucking scene that I've seen in a big budget movie in a while was the fucking river scene. The the barrels in the river. Come on, dude. Come on. You watch that scene and you watch Lord of the Rings, the first trilogy, you're like, how are they even made by the same person? <laughs> Only good part. <laughs> yeah, that was your that was your peak. You said the rest of the Hobbit movie's blue, but the fucking barrel scene, that was high art. That's a good, fun, goofy scene. People always fucking hit you with that whenever a fucking scene sucks ass, dude. <laughs> People always hit you with the, oh, I'm sorry, it's not Citizen Kane. But I'm not looking for Citizen fucking Kane. I'm looking for a good Lord of the Rings movie, dude. They already made three. It's like when they, it's like fucking the uh, <laughs> weird fucking sprite loving racist black voice Transformer. <laughs> and I'm like, that's weird. Everyone's like, okay, sorry, it's not fucking appealing to the critics. It's like, bro, I like fucking shitty, dumb, fun movies all the time. It doesn't need to be Scorsese. Just make it, you know, make sense. Uh, Aatrox seems like he absolutely hates the flaps that are breaking bad. No, there's only one scene in all of Breaking Bad that I hate. I wonder if you can guess what it is. No, nobody's got it. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty chill with... I love Breaking Bad, so... And also, like, even if a few parts haven't aged that well, it's like, whatever. The show was fucking great. I mean, overall, it's a masterclass. I read a letter by, um, um, what's his name? Uh, the guy that plays Hannibal Lecter. What's his fucking name? He's a great actor. Uh, dude, why am I blanking on his name? Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins wrote a letter to, uh, <laughs> holy shit, dude, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> To uh, a <laughs> fucking actor that plays Walter White. Brian Cranston. Why am I fucking losing my mind, dude? Uh, anyway, yeah. Anthony Hopkins wrote a letter to Brian Cranston. And he said, hey, uh, I think your work as Walter White is the single greatest overall piece of acting that I've ever seen. As a whole. As a sum across all the seasons. And I was like, damn. that Anthony Hopkins is like one of the greatest actors of all time. That's like an incredibly nice thing to say. And, like, I think what, you know, what Cranston did across those seasons, to tell that whole story of the character, it's phenomenal. It's really good. So, yeah, I love the show. But that being said, every big A stream. <laughs> really? You're laughing like that? At... <laughs> anyway, that, that scene rules. Uh, I know it's like this, this environment is not the best way to enjoy it unironically. But when I first saw that scene, I was like, damn, I'm fucking, I, I'm hooked. I think I binged. I binge like the next 10 episodes after that. <laughs> that scene ruled. Uh, talk about Nacho Varga. He's cool as fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's good. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Did you watch Better Call Saul? Yeah, I loved it. I, I, it, it, I might even like it more. I don't even know. Although I like the ending of Breaking Bad better than the ending of Saul. Not the very last episode, but like the build to the ending. Uh, they're both great. I like them both. But I might like it even more as a whole. Uh... uh... 
Yeah, Lalo. Fucking Lalo. What an awesome character. Uh, the mid-season finale of BCS was incredible. Yeah, it was. True facts. True facts. If you get to 20K subs, recreate that scene with Ari. Deal. Deal. <laughs> I will recreate the Breaking Bad crawl space scene with Golden Grams. Uh, I'm deleting the clips after this. <laughs> I'm deleting the clips. No, nah, now I know that I just have to go through after streams and just fucking delete the clips. So no big deal. <laughs> it's no problem. I've figured out a I figured out a way around your fucking game plans. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is time I believe for Marketing Monday, a cultural institution and touchstone. <clears throat> uh. I need you to tag yourself as we go into Marketing Monday to find out what's been going on this week in the world of marketing and business. Welcome to Marketing Monday on October 17th, where we go over all of the news this week in marketing and business with the section called Wins and Fails. And unfortunately, although I love to always start out with a positive win, today we must start out with a fail because on last week's episode of wins and fails, I talked about a technological breakthrough. I thought would change the world. Mark Zuckerberg's legs. He added digital legs to the metaverse and I called it one of the greatest wins of all time. The fail today, ladies and gentlemen, is that those legs were a lie. They were faked. Facebook's legs video was a lie. In fact, despite spending $10 billion a year and pivoting his entire multi-billion dollar company into the metaverse, he actually doesn't yet have the technology to make legs in the game. <laughs> despite having spent billions of dollars to create a virtual universe that looked like it was from 2004, his company was working on improving that universe to make it look like it was from 2009 instead. <laughs> uh, it turns out these were all done with motion capture and added in digitally later. Uh, but they hope to get to that technology soon when it launches next year. Mark Zuckerberg, you lied! And this is not, uh, this is not a very good time for more <laughs> or any bad metaverse news sorry let me just uh yeah uh because um company documents show that mark zuckerberg's, zuckerberg's meta pivot is falling short an empty world is a sad world and data has shown that most visitors to his quote horizon world don't return after the first month they try it once after buying uh, a quest and then they leave and don't return. Unlike, you know, the the uh, basically half of the world that is the 3.5 billion average monthly users that are part of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. The three parts of the business that he has ignored to pivot into Meta, which currently has a population less than Sioux Falls, South Dakota. <laughs> half of the world in one part of your business. And the reason he can do this, ladies and gentlemen, is because Mark Zuckerberg has what's called dual class shares in his company, where his shares have 20 times the voting rights. So despite the fact that he doesn't own over half of Meta and could be outvoted in a normal company, he cannot be outvoted at Facebook. He is the sole decider. Everything he says goes. <laughs> How is that legal? Because that was what they signed up for when he first made the company. And so uh, Mark Zuckerberg, if he thinks metaverse is the way to go, nobody can really stop him. And internal documents are showing that people are very, very, very unhappy with this direction internally at the company. In fact, there was an internal memo where they were getting mad at employees for not spending enough time in Horizon Worlds. <laughs> because Facebook employees also don't care about it. They were, they did not want to do it in their own time at all. And they were being asked to. So it's looking pretty bad. And their latest pivot is a $1,500 price tag 
new headset that is meant to sort of save the company by being for business class users. Uh, I don't know if anyone has the video, but basically, yeah, you get like floating monitors. You know, you put it on and all of a sudden your regular one monitor workspace turns into a um, minority report style floating touchscreen. And, you know, it's interesting. And if it's extremely helpful, maybe. But I doubt that companies entering a recession are going to buy, you know, 200 of these headsets <laughs> and get everybody trained up on using them. So I'm extremely skeptical of this path as well, Mark. Uh, yeah, also for that money, you could just buy two monitors. <laughs> true. True for a lot. Uh, true. True that. VR accounting, bro, though. You don't see the vision. Maybe I don't. But for me, that is currently a fail. And in an environment like this, fails breed additional fails. And Mark Zuckerberg is starting a farm <laughs> because he is following up in his flailing state, angry at the world, angry at his own company, and especially angry, most of all, at Apple, the company that is basically doing everything he wants to be doing, but better and taking all of his money. Apple has, uh, I mean, uh, Zuckerberg has greenlight this new ad campaign for WhatsApp, which is like kind of the last Facebook um, property that is doing decently well as Instagram begins to sag and Facebook collapses. Uh, this new ad campaign is targeted around how WhatsApp is way more private than Apple ever was. Green bubble, blue bubble, nah, more like private bubble. Takes aim at Apple's iMessage. Uh, they, they said Facebook owned app is actually far more private and secure than Apple's. Now, whether this is true or not, it doesn't really matter because Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook are bad at marketing. <laughs> <laughs> they're just not good at it. And so nobody believes them. Even though Apple is also a money hungry business that sort of fakes privacy so they could build their own ad agency or ad camp, you know, ad tracking network. Uh, people believe them because they're good at it. <laughs> they're very, very good at it. And Zuckerberg is not. And so this doesn't ring true at all and feels like, again, more wasted money on the part of Meta at a time when they kind of need to be cutting costs. Uh... Making Apple look good isn't easy, and yet he does it. It's a low bar, and he can't clear it. Uh, so things are bad over at Meta, but, you know, uh, there is some good news on that front, okay? There is some good news um, in the world of social media, and that is it's coming from... Sorry, one second. Uh, dude, I made nine windows here. Close, close, close. Close, close, close. Close, close, close. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. There is some good news coming from social media, and that is a win for you guys, the Zoomers, okay? Because while us millennials tried our damnedest to get hooked into the online ecosystem and really focus our attention spans down to the most elite levels of time. Three seconds. The world has moved on and left our skills in the dust because new research is showing that while we used to say you only have three seconds to attention in a social media video, Facebook's new research is saying it's now down to 1.7 seconds. <laughs> the average user watches a video for 1.7 seconds before losing attention and moving on. If you do not have a hook in the first 1.7 seconds, uh, you now have to move on. And I don't know if this is related, but I'm going to call this a win. And I'm going to call the reason why it could maybe be a fail. <laughs> the FDA has just confirmed we have a nationwide shortage of Adderall. <laughs> no! No! Price is skyrocketing for the ever important Adderall. A disaster to be sure. Two terrible fails today. No legs, no Adderall. What kind of future are we leaving for our kids? Uh, but I do want to give a sincere win. Again, I have a lot of social media related wins and fails today in this world of marketing. Let me give actually one sincere win to uh, 
Telegram, a messaging app, which found a pretty creative way to help um, uh, growth hack some new users is they added a uh, uh, the name of their app and their logo underneath the notch. So the user doesn't see it, but when they take a screenshot and share it, it all has the branding on it. Which that was like a clever way to utilize the new uh, Apple setup and uh, also get your branding out there without being uh, overly noticeable when you're... It's kind of clever. It was like a one little small thing, but I thought, eh, kind of clever. Kind of smart. Like a little... It's not huge. Not going to change anything. <laughs> but it's kind of clever. You know, it's a clever way to use it. And people will definitely copy it. So I thought it was, I thought it was uh, kind of interesting. Um, but while we're on social media, I did want to say that, again, that's a win, but I have to balance it out, as always, with a fail. And this one, this one cuts me deep. This one, this one really hurts me. I know that I say that sometimes and I'm joking. I'm, I'm serious now. This, this fail is serious because, um, I am, I am a big proponent of influencer marketing. Again, I myself am sometimes an influencer marketer. And when you can't trust the people who are doing uh, these paid messages, um, it's, it's, it's disheartening. It's disenchanting. You know what I said? It takes away from the the soul, the real relationship between the audience and the, and the community uh, and the streamer. And so when I found out that someone I really respected, which was um, uh, Marie Altman or Marin Altman, a popular Bitcoin astrologer. <laughs> it turns out that some of her astrology readings were actually secretly paid for by crypto company Celsius. And that, how could you do that, Marin? She was a successful Bitcoin astrologer. I found one of her videos to give you an idea of what it's what it's kind of like. Why it looks atrocious. Mercury opposite Bitcoin's Pluto on the 5th looks really challenging. Mercury opposite Bitcoin's Mars on the 7th looks mm -hmm. challenging. Mm -hmm. Mars square Bitcoin's Mercury on the 9th looks, yeah. Along with the full moon on the 13th being conjunct Pluto, which looks really gnarly for the world. However, after the 13th, we probably get a really strong recovery. Full moons are generally pivots where we dump into them and pump out of them, their local bottoms. So having a full moon on Bitcoin Jupiter, like the planet of wealth and luck, looks pretty strong for after. Along with other I trusted you, Marin! You said the full moon of Jupiter and I dumped into Celsius! And it turns out a lot of this stuff was paid for by some of these crypto companies, which, it, you know... <laughs> The fail is on her for lying, but the win is on them for spending their money so wisely. <laughs> what influencer marketing. Uh, so really, this is a, a true disaster, and my trust is finally shaken in Bitcoin. Nothing else that has ever happened would have shaken my trust in crypto, but this has done it. Is that illegal? Yes. And stupid, my favorite combination. Uh... <laughs> I can fix her. <laughs> hey, man, she can fix you, bank account-wise. Get in. Uh, so that was a disaster. Uh, but while we're on the subject of, of influencer ad reads, I, you know, I had a similar uh, uh, thought here. Um, you know, I, myself, have been absolutely uh, crushed by this uh, bad investments that I've made on behalf of her. So I would like to suggest right now if you have a chance <laughs> to make your own bad investments on behalf of me on public.com <laughs> or don't, or actually don't. You can invest fractionally where you just want to test things out and see how they go. You can also follow my trades. So if you want to see me make absolutely foolish trades like ape into Disney over and over week after week, you can do that. You can see my trades on public.com. I use it uh, every day to check my stocks. Uh, it's a clean, easy to use app. It also has some new stuff. Uh, you can invest in um, rare collectible items. Things like uh, you can collectively purchase a piece of like a rare Charizard. I, I wonder if I have the website for that. What is, it's like, uh, I think it's alts. Yeah, here it is. Alternative assets. You can invest in like a first edition Harry Potter. You can invest in it. And if the thing goes up in value, which a lot of collectibles have been doing as millennials enter their prime earning years, you can, uh, you, you can earn money when it's sold. So, uh, again, I don't support NFTs in any way, but they have uh, actual like Birkin bags, shadow rep words, real collectible items that actually have done pretty well. Uh, they have that. But again, the main thing I think is just seeing stock news. 
It's a good app for that. I use it every day to see updates on the stocks that are in my portfolio. And you can follow many people, including not just myself, but people like uh, Cody Coe, Scott Galloway, tons of interesting people. So check them out. Thanks again, public. They've been a longtime supporter of this stream. And in fact, uh, over 1,000 people from this stream have signed up for public and gotten a free share of stock, which you do get if you sign up with my code and HR, public.com slash HR. Uh, and I have taken the free shares of stock that I got from you guys signing up and put them all into Disney. <laughs> Spectacle, thank you for the raid. Uh, so thanks again to public. That being said, that was a fine ad read, sure. But is it the best ad read? No. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I have a win for you. And that is from Tyler1, who was paid to play Overwatch 2 and delivered a far superior ad read than I could ever hope to. Required talking points. Wait, wait. <laughs> Required talking points to be said in your own voice. Do not read word for word. These need to feel authentic and organic. <laughs> Overwatch 2 is now free to play, guys. I know Overwatch 1 w was like, you had got to buy it, which it was a nice, reasonable, comfortable price, but Overwatch 2 is now free to play. It's crazy. So I could never top that. What a phenomenal ad read from Tyler1. Truly the forefront. And you know what? I felt a real authenticity in his voice in the way that I never could from... Uh, from Marin, the Bitcoin astrologer. So big win to Tyler one. Uh, continuing, continuing, continuing. I want to talk about one of my main stories for the day. Main stories. This is what we call a m -m -m major win. Okay, this is where this gets shit gets real. There's a lot of wins, a lot of fails. This is a major win. The gloves are off. This is a win for us, as people like to watch. Interesting legal corporate battles. Microsoft and Sony are <laughs> duking it out. The fight is real, and it's all happening legally and behind the scenes. Let me actually get a better. One second. One second. Here it is. That's what I wanted. Uh, Microsoft has taken the gloves off. Uh, because here's what's happening. I know that you'd never expect this, but the UK is actually important. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, it, it, the UK matters? In the world, people care about what like they say in the UK government? Apparently, this merger between Microsoft and Activision Blizzard, two American companies, needs UK approval? <laughs> oh, they have to go and like talk to what the queen or something. She's dead. So, um, yes, mergers between two global companies require approvals from all the countries they'll be operating in to, uh, make it through. Now, normally most of them would be rubber stamped after the home country, uh, approves it, but the UK government is putting up quite a fight. The UK government is basically saying, Hey, uh, We've looked into this. They put a 72-page report that I skimmed. It was uh, it was it was dense. Uh, they're saying uh, we looked into this, and if you buy Activision Blizzard, it's going to be awful for Sony, awful for competition, awful for cloud gaming, and basically end up with you guys having a total monopoly over most of the video game industry. And um, you know whether or not that's 100% true, there's some merit to it. And they're threatening to block the deal. And so now the battle between Microsoft and Sony is taking place primarily in the UK's Competition and Market Authority courtroom. And uh, yeah, the $68.7 billion deal to buy Activision Blizzard. Here's their full report, by the way. Uh, extremely dense. But uh, all of this, uh, you know, cloud gaming, um, basically a lot of things are saying that the merger is going to be pretty bad for everyone else other than Microsoft. And Microsoft has already been low-key. They're walking it back now, but low-key was saying, hey, uh, Call of Duty, <laughs> you know, we're, we're spending a lot of money on this. We're going to be keeping that. <laughs> that's not going to be a Sony game after like one or two generations. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, factors to this to this argument because Call of Duty is by far the, no, the biggest selling game uh, in the world 
and especially in the UK, every year for the past 10 years. So making Call of Duty exclusive to Microsoft's Game Pass and not on Sony consoles is going to have a materially adverse effect on the competition of the industry. And so that is sort of becoming the sticking point. And it's perhaps possible that to appease the regulators in the UK, Microsoft will need to give a, a formal agreement to not make Call of Duty exclusive. Um, but right now, they are currently going gloves off and basically saying, Sony, nah, -uh, Sony, you're a liar. They're saying uh, this incorrectly relies on self-serving statements by Sony who significantly exaggerate the importance of Call of Duty. Microsoft is taking the tactic of saying Call of Duty sucks. <laughs> Nobody cares. It's not a big deal. Microsoft's strategy so far has been like, nah, dude. We're actually buying Blizzard, but Blizzard's ass. <laughs> Which, you know, not, not, not too far off. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, that's been most of the, um, the argument. I think I've got uh, this here. Um, they've also said the following. They said, PlayStation has been the largest console platform for the last 20 years. Sony's used its market power to do actions like raise prices without fear of losing market share. The, the idea of COD exclusivity ending PlayStation is not credible. That's what they say. Uh, and Sony has continued to buy their own studios. Although that being said, this is a little bit disingenuous because Microsoft spent $67.8 billion to buy one of the biggest and most powerful studios in the world. And Sony spent like $500 million to buy like, <laughs> you know, a small studio. It's not the same thing. They're not... <laughs> Microsoft is saying, hey, we're both doing it, but it's not its not the same thing. So, uh, and they, yeah, yeah. So, um, they did buy Bungie, but it's kind of a, the Bungie thing's not the same because they, uh, uh, Bungie has the way to get, have the ability to get out at a moment's notice and uh, don't really have a hit right now. <laughs> um, uh, Sony should buy Ubisoft or something. They can't afford it. They could not afford it. Uh, so anyway, uh, it is going to be, um, it's going to be a real fight is what I'm trying to say. This is gonna be a real, real fight. And it's just funny that it happened in the UK for whatever reason, the UK in the middle of a massive global meltdown <laughs> is like finding its footing on this one deal between two American companies. And I think it's honestly because although, you know, people don't want to admit it, uh, PlayStation is like diehard brand loyalty in the UK. <laughs> like PlayStation sells a fuck ton in the UK. And if they lose access to Call of Duty, it's going to be like really bad for consumers there. So I think they're just protecting the average chap who bought a PlayStation and wants to play fucking Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, so I don't know, but that's what's happening. And uh, we're definitely going to be following up on it because it's a very interesting story and they have a lot riding on it. Again, not to stress this enough, if this deal is blocked or for whatever reason doesn't go through and interest concerns, I'm not losing any sleep. I personally think big mergers like this are always, even if they don't work out to be monopolistic, they're just bad. It's always better to let companies fail on their own than just get swallowed up to bigger, bigger and pies. I'm fine with it. But Activision Blizzard, if they don't have this buyer of last resort, Microsoft, no one else is really in the market at the price they were talking about. And they're pretty fucked. Activision Blizzard is in like a real tough time right now. Overwatch 2 is not really hitting. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> I mean, they have a couple big things, but overall the company's in a, a morale downturn, stock price downturn. If this deal doesn't go through, it's going to be really bad for Activision Blizzard. So uh, this was sort of their big escape parachute. Uh, we'll see. We will see. Uh, that's my, uh, win slash fail for both of those. Let me give you another. Mm. Um, oh yeah. Speaking of the UK, just while we're on the subject, uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to, uh, <laughs> while we are on the subject of the UK, I just wanted to give a shout out. Listen, I know I've talked a lot of shit about the new, uh, prime minister of the UK, Liz Truss, who has come in to a company racked by debt 
massive amounts of the government's budget going towards interest payments on that debt and then deciding, hey, let's take out a bunch more debt. <laughs> that was sort of her first action uh, as prime minister was take on a ton more debt, basically to cut taxes for the rich. <laughs> that was her first, oh, did I say company? Country, sorry, country. Treating it like a company. Uh, she, yeah, her first action was to do a massive, massive multi-billion dollar tax cut for the rich on a country that clearly could not afford it. And that caused the, the, uh, valuation of the pound to basically get cut in half. But I didn't know she had that devil in her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't know she had that dog in her, dude. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know she got down like that. Okay? So never mind. Liz Trust, you're all right. I don't know. She bad, bad. Uh, and so I've now decided to take her side because the greatest trick, devil, greatest trick devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Hashtag devil, you know, <laughs> which I think, I don't know. Is that like, is that like saying I'm the devil, you know, keep me in, <laughs> keep me in power because so far every leadership in Britain has been voted out or knocked out of power pretty quickly. They've had a real revolving door of leadership because of the crisis the country's in. And right now, bookies are basically having a bet, this is the big win, on whether or not she will outlast a head of lettuce. I want to see, do you, wait, does anyone have the actual picture? <laughs> wait, let me see. Uh, here it is. Um... Yeah, here it is. There is a live stream going on on whether Liz Truss's uh, prime ministership will outlast the lifespan of this head of lettuce. <laughs> and bookies are having real bets on it. <laughs> because there's such a crisis of confidence in her leadership already, uh, and things are just getting worse by the day, heading into an extremely tough winter, it is looking like the lettuce may have a chance of outlasting her. Uh, on day two, they actually put on a wig, which I hope that I can find. Uh, maybe. Oh, okay. Well, this is day four. It's gotten, it's gotten out of control, but the lettuce seems to be holding strong. It seems to be holding strong. So we will see. I don't know. Get your bets in while you can. Great way to make money in the UK. Probably the only way left as the economy there continues to crater. Uh, enough about Britain, though. I just want to, I want to give a little bit on Britain. I want to talk a little bit about, um, again, my favorite topic, apparently lately, inflation. A couple things to say about inflation. Uh, number one, there is some decent news. I know I always give you guys bad news about inflation. Let me finally, for once, give you some decent news. Not a joke. Well, <laughs> let me give you some decent news on inflation, all right? Okay, here it is. Four ways that inflation is not so bad. Number one. Um, big win. There are strategies you can take. Number one, you can delay major purchases like a home or a car. You can reduce your holiday spending and you can stay in a job you don't enjoy. <laughs> this was CNBC's guide to preparing for recession and inflation. Just have more money, right? Don't buy things and then be in a job you don't like. So there, already big win, right? These are easy guides. Easy guides are things you can do uh, coming up. Second thing, bada bing, actual good news, rent for the first time in like uh, a very long while. I don't know the, how many quarters it's been. Rent, average rent, median actual rent has actually declined. Now again, you can't even see it. Wait, <laughs> my, my camera's blocking it. <laughs> you can't even see it, it's so small. But it has dipped. It has dipped. It is possible that incredibly uh, rising rents have finally peaked and may finally be subsiding, especially as we enter in 
to a pretty tough economic environment. And rent is a very core part of inflation. So if we have a handle on rent rising, this may be an actual sign that inflation has begun to subside. Now, again, we've said this a lot. And it seems to be every time someone says it's transitory, it's almost over, it continues to rise. Again, last month's inflation, pretty bad. So tough to say, but it's it's a good, it's a better sign that it continuing to rise. So um, rents may actually start to become uh, going down slightly in, in the next coming quarters, which is a decent bit of good news. Uh, speaking of which, uh, almost everything else has gone up. But Joey P here, a guy I follow on Twitter, has found all the things that have gone down. Smartphones are cheaper than they were. Televisions are cheaper than they were. Sporting events are cheaper. Video equipment, ship fare, uh, computers, peripherals, beef and veal. Basically, <laughs> he has said, the lesson here is the best activity in a post-inflation environment is taking the ship to a baseball game, recording it on your smartphone, and eating a steak with ketchup at the ballpark. <laughs> so I found the perfect date night. <laughs> Write this down. Okay. This is the perfect weekend activity. Patrick Mahomes does this. <laughs> I used to do that with your dad. Perfect. Do it again now. It's cheaper than it was when you used to do it. Those are actually cheaper things than they were before. Everything else... Other than that, is more expensive, but not a big deal because you still have that. Uh, finally, last way to save money on inflation is to watch ads on Netflix because it's finally happening and quicker than we thought. By November 3rd, we're only like two weeks away, uh, the basic with ads tier will launch at $7.99 or $6.99 uh, in 12 countries, including the US, Australia, Germany, and the UK. Netflix with ads is finally here. And yes, it will be $7 with ads to watch Netflix in the basic tier. So you can save money on Netflix if you consider it a um, uncancelable bill by watching with ads. Uh, at that point, I'll just pirate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wait, so wait, I'm sorry. Just so I understand. It costs what eleven dollars now, and then they added a new tier that's cheaper with ads. And you said, "Okay, at this point, I'll just pirate." <laughs> so you were happy with it at eleven, but now that there is a cheaper option, <laughs> you're uh, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Hey, hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, Stranger Things torrent, dude. I'm fucking. I'm seating for you. Uh, big wins all around win for the pirates. Now, uh, let me do something that I almost never do on marketing Monday. Watch some marketing. I want to do a segment where I do win and fail ads of the week. I'm going to show you one win ad and one fail ad, uh, that I liked and didn't like. And we will talk about that and then go into what's up Beijing. So, um, here is, do you guys want the win ad or the fail ad first? Important question. Important question. Do you want the win ad or the fail ad first? I'm seeing a lot more fails than wins, so uh, I am totally happy to do that. Let's watch the fail ad. I clipped this myself while watching. By the way, <laughs> uh, the actress in this ad I actually really like. She's done very much uh, amazing stuff, and I've met her in real life. We watched Evo together. Um, that being said, I clipped this ad while I was watching Worlds, and I thought, wow, this is a pretty bad ad. <laughs> so let's watch it. No, not this part. This is just Worlds. Wait, wait, wait. Then? Yeah, that's the most I can give you. Fine. Then it's time for the ace up my sleeve. My beloved squishy pig with... With original holographic cover art. Hey, Ash, what you selling? Save the references, Jake, from State Farm. I'm saying goodbye. This little piggy went to the game store. You don't have to sell your favorite games. State Farm has coverage options, so you get a rate that fits your budget. Thanks, Jake. Hands off the squish! For surprising great rates that fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Cringe! Oh, by the way, the... Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> 
Jesus, we gotta write that. <laughs> the chat just spams NA ads. <laughs> NA ads, Keck W, NA ads, Keck W over and over. Uh, yeah, not a terrible ad, I guess, but I just found it to be pretty, uh, pretty wasteful. You know, they've done pretty good stuff before with Riot. They've done some cutting edge stuff. And, uh, I found this to be, uh, pretty trademark, like, um, gamers. Hey gamers, you like this? Here's a gamer related thing that you guys can all relate to. And I found it to be pretty lame. Ashley Birch is great, but she couldn't save that I thought was a pretty, uh, contrived ad. Um... Also dated. Also pretty dated. You know, I'm saying it's it's like a... Um, it feels like more at home in 2007 than, than 2022. Uh, uh, so that was the bad ad. That being said, I have to balance it out with a win, which I think is a very good ad. Uh, this ad comes from... France, if you can believe it. This comes from France. It comes from KFC France, uh, which actually made a fantastic ad that I was uh, extremely impressed with. So let's watch it right now. Um, this is KF Cinema from France. Yeah, they were playing that in the opening of movie theaters. I thought it was great. Uh, they were using uh, iconic movie scenes with the KFC Crunch. And uh, cool ad, but this is just a lot. God, I hate listening. <laughs> Who's What's misophonia? <laughs> As in you so phony? Uh, you don't want to hear people eat? That's crazy. I, I thought it was a great ad. Uh, they also did this one um, from last December. Let's see. Oh, actually, that one's only in French. They don't even have an English version. Um, misophonia is a real condition? What does it mean? I am also misophonic, and that was horrible. Well, I guess there's not enough misophonia people in France. Um, misophonia. Selective sound sensitivity. Anyway, I watched it because it is a gold Clio winner. Uh, and it was the first one that I liked. <laughs> I usually watch all the Clio winners and I didn't enjoy most of them. And that one really stood out. Uh, did it perform well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I it just happened so that we can't really tell. But they won a lot of awards. Um, Clio is like an advertising agency award. Uh, says the GameStop ad was dated. Shows KFC in the reference movies. Uh, no, but it's totally different. <laughs> if you're a cinema lover, you'd like the second one. If you're a gaming lover, you'd hate the first one. Like it, it, the first one feels like it's trying to relate to you, and the second one is iconic. Uh, two fail ads. Yeah, maybe it's not for you. Um, okay, now next, continuing. Uh, where was my last thing? Oh, I think we're almost time for. Oh, one more thing, actually. Okay, here's a real ad for the. You know what? Here's a real way that we can get both food and gamers happy. Forget about KFC. Forget about State Farm doing tacky gaming ads. Here's a real one. Okay? A new mod called Pizza Oblivion where you can literally order a Domino's pizza to your door by talking to a character in Oblivion. <laughs> Chatting to a character named Pizza Black... <laughs> We'll order a 12-inch pizza delivered to your actual home. <laughs> All you have to do is install Oblivion, install this mod, put in your address and your credit card information, and you can actually <laughs> order a pizza to your home. The metaverse is real. Innovation at its finest. <laughs> actually... <laughs> yeah, and also your address gets posted online. No big deal. Uh, 
Uh, but with that, let's get to the real news and the serious news with our world famous segment watched by world leaders around the world and you. What's up, Beijing? What's up, Beijing? One more time. What's up, Beijing? My camera back. More chess videos. What's up, Beijing? He said it three times. You know why? Because he's serving his third consecutive five-year term. The, the uh, what is this? The 50th Annual Party Congress is happening now. And he gave a historic speech to the entire 2,000 plus CCP government officials who came out to re-elect him to his third consecutive term. Five more years. I don't believe the actual uh, election has officially happened yet, but at this point, it's all but guaranteed. He has consolidated power. He is the man in charge. Uh, and he, in his speech, had some very interesting things to say. The uh, most important takeaway and the most stark message uh, to me, let me see if I can find it, was about about Taiwan, which was also the statement that got him the biggest applause of the day when he said, quote, the wheels of history are rolling on towards China's reunification and the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Complete reunification of our country must be realized and it can, without a doubt, be realized. Basically saying the militarization and invasion of Taiwan uh, can and will happen during his term. Uh, he, he's not really beating around the bush here. When speaking to his own other government officials, he's being very clear that they will not tolerate a, uh, a separate Taiwan. So, you know, conflict risks continue to rise between the United States and, United States and China over Taiwan. Like, this is, this is gone from being like a, a small probability to like a very large one as Xi Jinping continues to, to, to consolidate power. Um, and it remains to be seen how it's gonna, exactly going to play out. That's the core issue, basically, between U.S.-China relations. Um, some see... Uh, Xi's China as an era of total control. I'm sort of moving backwards. I will be honest, as someone who follows Chinese news very closely, uh, there have been more um, citizen anger and protest than ever before in like his entire term right now. And I'd say largely not due to anything related to uh, human rights or conflict with the West or Taiwan. They're, they're cool with all of that. Basically, the big problem right now is zero COVID. <laughs> Zero COVID uh, policy in China is causing many protests because people really hate these extreme lockdowns now that they're like multiple years in. The lockdowns in China are severe. They, they are like total house arrest, uh, constant QR code stations, constant check-ins, um, you know, uh, difficult travel, business shutdowns, and... Uh, there's really um, there's really a lot of discontent building among people, like more than ever. I mean, you're seeing a lot of people get extremely angry about it. So it remains to be seen how exactly they're going to deal with it. Although in his speech, he basically said um, he's not backing down from it. <laughs> uh, and they're going to keep doing zero COVID. Now, they don't really have much of a choice at this point unless they improve their vaccine uh, effectiveness because if current variants of COVID were, were to rip widespread through a billion plus people in China, the death toll would be pretty catastrophic. So, um, yeah, they don't have a lot of choices, but it's, it's causing a lot of stress and strain in the middle of already a turbulent economic time, uh, for China. So this is all what's going on in the Chinese neck of the woods. I did want to say, um, the United States struck its probably most severe, uh, Chinese sanction or blow it's ever done right now, not even like under Trump, like right now under Biden and no one's really talking about it. Very recently, China initiated a ban from any American worker from to keep their citizenship if they worked at a Chinese uh, chip company. Basically, any American overseas helping at all 
or working at all at any Chinese chip manufacturer uh, has been told that if they don't quit their job, they will lose citizenship. And like, no one's really talking about this. And it's like a massive blow. It like, t- like hundreds of people that were high up in these companies resigned overnight. They're pretty paralyzed. Now, short term, this is going to be extremely damaging to China's domestic chip manufacturing. But things like this in the past have backfired because China usually retaliates with a sanction of their own. And long term, they figure out how to do it without any Americans. And then they're just kind of like, then they've cut America out of the picture altogether. So we'll see. But I mean, the problem is um, leadership in AI and chips uh, and silicon technology is just extremely, extremely important for the next, you know, five, 10 years. Like it's extremely um, powerful and advantageous and both companies are really fight, or both countries are really fighting for it. So uh, I don't know. It remains to be seen, but definitely a lot going on uh in that area so we'll be watching that closely um why don't they just grow more potatoes oh because it's like lays (laughs) yes yeah how will china survive if they have to make their own tasty chips like they'll never be able to currently manufacture the ruffle (laughs) the ruffle takes a real process that only an american could understand you know what i'm saying the ridges i don't think that anyone be able to um Due to the riches. <laughs> China has been trying to move the chip value chain for 20 years. Limiting success. Yes, exactly. In fact, they have. China has actually uh, done a very poor job thus far at um, moving beyond like the, the basic level of refining raw materials and when it comes to chips. But they've done it in many, many other industries. And there's no reason to think they couldn't do it for chips eventually. Um uh, but they have, there was recently a, like a big anti-corruption government thing because Chinese leaders looked around and were like, Hey, we spent like hundreds of billions of dollars to get better chip manufacturing here. And we haven't done it. What's going on. And they found out that a lot of the money was being embezzled or misused or, uh, not being used appropriately. So there has been a crackdown. We'll see. Uh, we will see, but this is going to be like, all I gotta say is like, if you zoom out a little bit, I don't see a path towards tensions going down between America and China. Right now, they're just heating up like crazy. The only good thing that can happen is Russia losing their war and like it being over. Like the the, the war in Ukraine ending would help a lot to reducing tensions globally. But right now, things are are heating up for sure. Uh, And so that is what's going on in China. I don't think I have any other insane China news. That was the big update. We will have the finale of Xi Jinping's speech uh, when he assumingly wins for next week. Uh, is there anything else I want to say? I wanted to close with one more win and fail. Mm, let's see. Um, what? Yeah, okay. Sorry, I was checking that. Yeah, one more win and fail. Uh, wait, what about new Chinese currency? What do you mean? New Chinese currency? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. There was one more Chinese thing. Uh, <laughs> wait, I need to close with this. Yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot. This is the biggest This is the biggest thing I wanted to mention. Uh, so, yeah, all of this stuff is happening in China, right? Uh, COVID lockdowns are becoming a problem. They're having a big um, uh, real estate uh, crashes. Um, and, uh, Xi Jinping's taking power. And, uh, on Tuesday they were supposed to release their GDP numbers. And for <laughs> what is an extremely, extremely rare act, they just didn't, <laughs> they just didn't, they just did it. Uh, this is, this is extremely, you know, it's very Sigma of them. <laughs> Uh, to just not do that, uh, because a lot of agencies, companies, institutions around the world rely on these numbers to make predictions and, and, uh, economic decisions. And, and they just did it. They're just not saying what's going on (laughs) with the GDP and whether GDP numbers, and you got to imagine, this is not a good sign. This is not like they're so good. We don't want to release them. (laughs) 
the GDP growth is so insane uh, that we don't want to release it. No, I, I got to imagine that it's probably a shaky number that they don't want coming out during their Congress because the Congress needs to be a unanimous, good looking out for Xi Jinping. He needs to look like the total goat and then, uh, you know, win re-election, popular support, I'm the best, and then maybe they release the numbers. But um, so it does seem like things are indeed shaky in China, though they're also shaky all over the world. So it remains to be seen uh, how it nets out. Uh, <laughs> Jerome, take notes. <laughs> yeah, we should do that. Uh, but at least we can close on one final good thing in the world of geopolitics. And that is, that is, that, uh, Joey B can still enjoy a tasty ice cream cone. I'm not concerned about the Chancellor of Dallas. Yum. I'm concerned about the rest of the world. Does that make sense? Can you explain that? Yes, our economy is strong as hell. In the internals of it. Inflation is worldwide. It's worse off everywhere else than it is in the United States. So the problem is the lack of economic growth and sound policy in other countries, not so much. Right. Yeah, he's not even, he's not terribly wrong. Uh, although I got to be honest, right now is probably not the best time to say our economy is strong as hell and eat an ice cream cone. Because <laughs> our economy is not strong as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Our economy is actually doing uh, better than most of the rest of the world. We're, we're kind of resilient in the fact that the dollar is so powerful. But I don't think that it's strong as hell. <laughs> and I don't think that's the best time to say the ice cream cone. But uh, everybody wants to look good. Whether it's GDP numbers or ice cream, everyone's got to look good for the voters. And so that's where I will end today's wins and fails. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for more Marketing Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Marketing Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have time to do uh, Toys R Us and I don't really have it to be honest. I mean, I've got it, but I would much rather add way more video clips. So what I'm thinking is we do Community uh, to close out the night. Watch uh, two episodes of Community is what I was thinking. So thank you for watching Marketing Monday. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, I will be watching two episodes of season one of Community, which has been releasing them on YouTube in honor of their upcoming movie release. Uh, a little snack time is totally allowed. Let's get some snackies before we jump into two episodes of community. Wait, is there any questions or anything else about uh, what's going on in the world, marketing, business, anything? Because I'm down to talk about it for a second while we get snackies. Um, also, I can get... Uh, what's really the point of China not releasing their numbers if they're obviously bad? Well, they're probably not actually terrible. Generally, the estimations are that China's GDP growth will go from like being 5% a year, which is insanely good, to like 2 or 3%, which is still I, uh, still ahead of the U.S., still ahead of most countries. Uh, they're still in a period of, I mean, they're doing well, uh, manufacturing-wise. Um, but it's slow down. They don't want to appear like they're slowing down, which they are. They're, doing, they're actually slowing down dramatically and having a really tough time. And it could get worse from here. Uh, but they are slowing down and they don't want to look like that before the Congress. That's the main thing. Will China's GDP pass USA's? Um, listen, all predictions, you know, two years ago are 100% that happens. It It's shakier now because of everything going on. Like nobody knows. <laughs> it's up in the air. Eventually, the answer is almost certainly yes, though. The country is so much bigger. Unless there's like a major world war or something. Do you know what I'm saying? Like assuming things continue even close to where they're at now. Yes. China should pass the United States in GDP. Um, and that's where my odds on bet would be. Mm. Why do you think India's GDP isn't as high? 
uh, India's GDP is starting to grow. They're having, India's having one of the best periods right now. And while everyone else is shaky, India's doing decently well. A lot of companies are, are moving their manufacturing, including Apple, from China to India. Okay, so looking good is the goal, but aren't most voters aware of it anyways? I don't know how to phrase it. No, they're not. Do you think most voters look for the fucking GDP report? <laughs> they don't know shit. <laughs> they, you know, and you can't make a headline. Like, no real news organizations make a headline that China's economic growth is slowing until they have the numbers. So you can't even get the headlines. Thoughts on Kanye West buying Parler? Ah, I knew I forgot something in the social media segment. Dude, I got to get my fucking links in order. The Parler Kanye West thing was something I definitely wanted to discuss. Fuck. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Bro, Kanye West buying Parler was fucking goofy as all hell. <laughs> uh, edit it in. Uh, I don't even remember how I could fucking conceivably edit it in. Um, he's just, he's so dumb. Let's just talk about it, bro. I don't even need, I don't need to edit it in. I think that was a good win to fail. It was already kind of long. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on, man. He's, he's fucking losing it. But I, I can tell you that like, um, you know, saying dumb things is one thing, but spending a lot of money on something dumb, especially buying a company, that's the great way to fucking lose the money he does have. You know, the, like the vast, vast, vast majority of his money comes from the income streams from Yeezys. If Yeezy stops selling or he can't sell the Yeezy brand for as much as he thought, he he's legitimately going to be worth so much less money. So, you know, he's, he's really towing a fine line, dude. If, if the fucking, if the fad ends on Yeezys, he's going to like lose 80% of his net worth. Uh... Um, thank you for encouraging me to be a bad student and showing me open AI. My workload has dropped 75% and all my assignments get A's. Bro, AI cheating is fucking crazy. AI cheating is crazy for, 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 for writing. It's getting out of control. There's like no reasonable way to, to check it. It's it's actually insane if true. I've been I've been, I've been I tried it out. I tried out the the meta AI writer thing. The it's fucking crazy. You can put in almost any prompt, write a little bit, and it just goes. It look it writes it like a fucking person. It's shockingly good, and uh, I don't know how they're gonna. I, I don't know. It's gonna be a weird, weird, weird fucking world uh, for schools. They, they're trying to change so dramatically. Um, essay mm. exams pog I mean yeah I mean it, it'll be tough obviously to if you have to do a, if you have to do a, like a live writing assignment <laughs> people will collapse I guess because they don't have AI but um, I don't know, but also it's like, you can't turn back the clock on tools, right? It's like trying to make somebody, it's like when teachers didn't want you to use Wikipedia. It's like, bro, Wikipedia exists and it's great. <laughs> you know, I, I, every new tech is going to be like, you're going to have to, you're just going to have to use it and they're going to have to find a way to do it. But, um, they still don't, I know, but people still do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> It's a, whether or not they say not to do it. It's like, it just makes sense. Um, um, the point of writing an essay isn't just to get your right. It's to get your thing quickly. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> no one is, you're not, and the problem with AI is that it's so fucking easy. You don't learn anything. It's not, it's not even really a tool. It's not a tool in the sense of like, it, it improves what you're putting to the table. It's like, you almost do nothing. <laughs> and the AI does all of it. So yeah, but you know, maybe that's just not a skill that'll be as necessary. I don't I have no idea. I have no idea how it's going to be handled, but I do know they won't be able to catch it very well with, with anti-cheat. I wrote the prompt though. <laughs> I wrote seven words. So I deserve credit for this 8,000 word essay. <laughs> uh, 
uh, either way, listen, uh, AI, AI is everything that crypto thought it would be. It's an actual world changing innovation that has many practical applications <laughs> that's going to affect every aspect of our life. It's, it's, uh, AI, AI is hitting hard on so many fronts and it has so many uses that people are already finding like immediately useful on like crypto. And so it's, it's changing things very dramatically. And some of it will be good and some of it will be insane, but it's, it's, there's no putting the genie bag in the bottle. So I don't know. What's stopping professors from using AI against AI? Well, first of all, they're slower. Like uh, the establishment and the institutions are always slower to technology than the students who need to use it to cheat. Um, so they'll always be behind. And then it's just really tough. It's it, end of the day. End of the day, like the most the AI can say is like, hey, this is kind of sus. But, <laughs> you know, it's if there's no example of actual plagiarism, you can always say like, hey, I wrote this. Like what, what are they, you know, teachers can't. It's much harder to prove. Um, <clears throat> I honestly think we're going to get to the point where AI written text is indistinguishable from human text. The thing is, though, and I... I I know this is crazy to say the average person's writing ability is so fucking bad. The way I can tell it's AI is because it's written well. <laughs> Most AI shit that I read is, is more well written, better structured. Like it, it, the, the points flow in a coherent manner. Like it has an intro paragraph that it sets things up and then it follows it point by point. Like no shot people can write like that. It, it's actually far superior to the average person. Like maybe a, a masterful writer, like, like a fucking, you know, a George R. R. Martin or something can outright AI right now, but he also doesn't write. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like our good writers are too lazy. So it's going to be all down to fucking, uh, I don't know. Who, who, uh, who's that one writer that churns out like 19 books? Stephen King. It's going to be Stephen King versus the fucking AI, dude. And he's our last chance before he dies. Hmm. Give George the AI. <laughs> dude, George R. R. Martin is right now looking at it. He's looking at Meta AI and he's thinking, dude. He's like got his fucking deadline on the calendar circled. <laughs> and he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, he might do it. He might fucking pull the trigger, bro. The professors would know because their students are too stupid to write this. 100%. I'm sure many professors have seen AI work and thought there's no fucking shot they wrote this. <laughs> but the problem is for a professor, proving cheating is actually like extremely important and can get them in more trouble. Like accusing a student of cheating can get them in more trouble than the student. Students have really flipped the power on teachers. You saw that teacher that gave kids bad grades and then got fired? It's like, uh, yeah, the, the universities are more in it. Like the, the, the bureaucracy of the university really only cares about getting money from students and printing degrees. They don't really care about challenging them very much or making it that hard. So, um, you know, academic honesty, unless you can directly prove it with plagiarism, like they don't, teachers would have a tough time taking it up and making a big deal about it. Um, community? Oh yeah, it's community time. Let me see. Can a monkey typing random letters for eternity come up with Harry Potter? Sure, yeah. Yes, eternity, right? Random letters eventually. One combination. That's a very easy question. <laughs> but is the monkey transphobic enough? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if he's not, then it's not going to have that same oomph that Harry Potter has. You know what I'm saying? He might write the words, but if you don't feel the hate, then then it's like not as good of a book. Uh, okay. Any takes on Musk and Starlink with Ukraine? Yeah, just the obvious ones that he's kind of a jackass. <laughs> if you guys didn't see, um, Elon Musk, uh, Starlink has been used for internet access or uh, in Ukraine, which is actually very helpful to the war effort. 
And then somebody on the Ukrainian government, some general or something, tweeted, fuck off to Elon Musk. So he said, okay, I'm not paying. <laughs> and basically said, the government better pay for Starlink or I'm cutting access. And then everyone was like, wow, that's pretty fucking shitty to do, right? In the middle of the war, right? And also for the world's richest man. And also only cost like, I don't know, $200 million a year or something uh, for a pretty big thing. And then so after that, he's like, okay, fine, I'll pay for it. <laughs> I'm a hero. <laughs> Like, no matter what they say, I'll do it. And then it's like, okay, well, you need backflip twice. So, I don't know. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think he's paying for it. Also, the U.S. does pay a lot of the costs anyways. Yeah, they already do pay a huge, a huge portion of the cost. Um, thoughts on voice acting wages with the Bayonetta News? I just thought that individual story wasn't that interesting. The Bayonetta News. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's terrible. They only offered her 4K. But um, I don't know the whole thing between their relationship. I don't know how long she's worked there. Um, and I don't know what, what, what workload goes into it. I think the interesting thing for me with voice acting is AI. I think the studios that have replaced low level voice acting with AI voice acting is, is much more interesting of a story because, uh, that's like a permanent loss of a job. Uh, and I, I am interested in, uh, how that gets dealt with. Um, Voice acting has always had wage issues and unionization issues. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of industries where um, a lot of people want to do it. So there's eager demands and the consumer doesn't seem to care who does it. Um, it's just tough. It's just tough for them to get enough leverage to... But unionization would help a lot. Um, oh, yeah, let me get the community episode ready. Emilio Murray, thank you for the 20 gifties. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry I missed it. Thank you very much. And and thank you for the long time support. Uh, you've been in chat for a very long time. I appreciate it. Um, Yeah, I missed it during the, the intro. What is this? Okay. It's a six billion parameter model. It is a Jax based model. What and now this? there are a lot Ha! Ah, this guy tilts me every single day and you're telling me it's a bot! I've been noticing this guy for weeks! <laughs> Every day he says the no, most annoying shit and you're telling me this whole time it's been a fucking bot! An AI? <laughs> Look at him, dude! <laughs> hey, it's a six billion parameter model. <laughs> What's funny though, he seems like a great chatter. I want some of these AI chatters. All he does is spam low W Omega Lol, Bro Holy Dies of Cringe, Pac Man. <laughs> I mean, this is a great chatter, dude. <laughs> He's got rules. You, you guys' jobs are gonna get taken by AI. <laughs> Bro, holy. <laughs> uh... 